Well, I just learned something else that was mildly entertaining. I was just uh, getting ready to put these in a bag and I realized four of them didn't have O-rings left on them. Well, there's only one place those O-rings were going to be. And that was on the fuel rail. So I used my little tool here and I dug them all out. So if you do this yourself, pay attention to uh, <laughs> what comes out with the fuel injector. Because I was probably going to try to put that fuel rail in, uh, or fuel rail seated on top of the new injectors. And the old O-rings were still in there and that would have created a, a problem. I would have would not have known what to look for if I hadn't paid attention and noticed that the old fuel injectors were missing the O-rings. So, lesson learned. Okay, got the right side bank done. They're all in, they're all seated, they're all connected. They're all looking good. One thing to know, or the one thing that I used to guide me when I seat the fuel rail over the top of the fuel injector, if you can no longer see any of the portion of the O-ring, then you know you've, uh, you've got it seated pretty good. But if you've tightened everything up and you can still see some of that O-ring, uh, something's wrong. And that goes for the bottom, but I can't imagine it being out that far in the bottom. And because of the fuel rail design and the stud design, you can't force the fuel rail down over the top of the fuel injectors any further than it just simply physically will allow. So don't stress that point too much. And on this front right fuel injector, the one next to the um, fuel regulator, you need to angle it just a little bit so it clears this um, fuel line that goes to the regulator so you can get the connector on it. It won't be in the same position as all the others. At least not on mine, it didn't. So here we go. Everything's there. Now it's a matter of cleaning up all the other parts while I wait on that bottom tap from Amazon so I can finish up that one stud. The other parts, I just want to clean up the, uh, the intake housing. I did clean up the throttle body best I could. Yeah, it's not the way I'd like to see it, but it's good enough. And I got all the buildup on the inside taken care of. Just a little bit of Dawn deter detergent and uh, ammonia. And lightly, lightly scrubbed with a Scotch-Brite. Just enough to break up that uh, buildup. So that one's ready. Get that upper uh, intake housing cleaned up. I've already got all the gaskets. Everything else is uh, basically ready to rock and roll as soon as I get that one stud hole retapped. And then, uh, then I'll be happier about it. And if that for some reason doesn't work, well, there's always JB Weld. That probably would work for that situation. And that's all I've got for now. Well, the bottom tap, the one quarter by 20 bottom tap I ordered from Amazon came in. So I was able to chase the threads on uh, the hole that my homemade stud was going into. So it now goes down to the bottom and uh, it's got plenty of uh, thread grasp there. So we got the injectors all in, connectors on, and this fuel rail is set. Got both of the uh, wire harness hangers on, and we're looking good. So the next step is just get the intake back on. I got the new gaskets, and then uh, get the EGR valve reconnected, miscellaneous vacuum lines. And I think that's it for the engine itself. Then the next step after that is put the PCM back in and uh, give it a go. We'll see what happens. Well, we've got the upper intake and got the new gasket here. And this line that had broke on, broken off initially when I removed it, or was broken when I removed it, I don't know which way, had to kind of 
jury rig a little bit of fix here anyway it goes to the pcv valve which is irritating so i also had to buy another adapter right here that sits on top of the pcv valve the t connector that this end will eventually connect to so at this point we're just going to uh, yeah as long as the sunlight's still with us i'm not sure i've already blown everything out with air so hopefully we don't have any other debris in there it's minor i don't know just debris from sitting for ages it's not from my work that debris was already in there probably once again from the emissions control filtering back into the intake making it messy in reality it should just be a super clean chamber without all this debris Which yeah, three eighths head. Yeah, those are the ones. So we're going to fit this in here. get the gasket lined up underneath it. If I get one hole lined up, get a bolt in it, then I'll get the others lined up.
Got three of them in. One more just to get them started and keep the gasket in place. And the EGR is lined up. And the nut is going on. All right. Got that filled in, that filled in. Nothing's clogging up anything. <clears throat> We're losing a bit of the sun, it's getting that time of day. But this is what we got. We got the intake in, got the gasket on, and we got the four bolts started by hand. I got the EGR nut started. So we're gonna finish this up tomorrow when we got to, don't have a time limit because of the sun.